And they feel that, okay, if you don't want to serve, if you don't want to be a slave, there's no, no need for you then. Matter of fact, we're going to set up camps in which we will force you to serve and call them internment camps. And if you don't want to serve, that's fine. We will kill you. That's their plan. But we don't fear that either. But that's their plan. For those who don't believe in the Bible, listen, this is not for you because the Bible is where the answers are. So you're not even in the conversation if you don't believe in the Bible and think that everything in the earth is just organically happening without a plan. You're dead already. You're not even in the game if you don't believe in the Bible. But going back, all nations became rich and powerful through our fall, and they know it. Let's go back to Revelations. 11, and let's pick up at 10. Revelations, chapter 11, verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another. They started sending gifts to one another, setting up a trade, a stock market. Read. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Because when these two had the understanding of who their God is, talking about Judah and Israel, we always linked into the Most High to destroy the Gentiles. And we tormented the, the other nations who were following other gods. You look in the Old Testament, we used to go throughout all their provinces and tear down their kingdoms. They remember this. So we lost our history. They didn't lose our history. So you wonder why they hate us so and treat us a certain type of way? They got the history of what our forefather David did to them. Okay, David went and took all kingdoms down so that Solomon can have 40 years of peace. They remember that. So you forgot that. But we, we slaughtered in the Old Testament their people in, in large numbers. Okay, so when they had an opportunity to rule over us, they couldn't wait to get their hands on us. Especially we're separated from our God. That's the only, only power we had. That was our saving grace that we were with the God of all gods. We turned our back on him. He gave powers to the Gentiles. They began to destroy us. And it says, now, when we fell, all the nations started sending gifts to each other because they remember us tormenting them and going against them. And... I want you all to recognize this, brothers and sisters. Whenever we were out on the streets or you see brothers teaching on the streets, notice how the other nations who are not Israel never really go against the teachings. Because they know that we know. They'll sit back and listen and look at it and go back to the mosque and say, oh, I think those people are waking up or whatever. But they will never say nothing to those that are teaching or try to oppose them. It's only our people that come up and defend the nations who have enslaved us. Check it out. Really take a good look at it. The other nations, I've seen Arabs sit back and look, and you can see the look on their face. The look on their face was not, well, they're lying. The look on their face was like, you know, <laughs> they're waking up. They understand prophecy. They know prophecy. See, they're waking up now. One time we was on a radio show, and I, I don't like to go into these stories, but we was on one radio show, and one brother took five hours who, who was in Manchester, tried to defend Islam, couldn't defend it at all. We're showing images of a woman's private part they had at the bottom of Mecca in which a man must stick his head through and kiss because they deal with a feminine, a female deity that they're not telling you about, but it's the same ceramics as they follow in the Roman Catholic Church. And that's why over the Roman Catholic churches, they got red doors and at the top is at the point of a woman's private part when you enter the doors of the churches. It's the same thing. It's the goddess of fertility in the churches, the red door, 
that's shaped like a woman's private part and they got it on in Islam too where you have to stick your head in and kiss between a woman's private part in Islam and we broke this thing down and showed this guy images everything and he still was fighting we gave him history Persian mythology everything that Islam was we had books records everything and this brother and we asked this brother why are you defending a people that could care less about you what do you have to do with Ishmael you're Isaac. You're Jacob. Yes. That was the same day when the taxi came Yes. 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 And Mark was there. He was there, a matter of fact. Mark was going back and forth with the guy big time. But here's the part that Mark, you're mentioning, is correct. A taxi driver came who was Arab and came to us and said, well, listen. This guy cannot really represent Islam. He totally discounted this brother at all. He is as if this guy didn't exist. He's like, well, this guy really don't represent Islam. He told the guy to his face. And then the guy came, gave the church a donation. He was a Muslim. Gave the church a donation. And then he said, anytime that you are in England, please, I need you to sit down with me and my wife. We open our house for dinner for you. Now check that out. And then he would come to Peace FM and ask, are we coming back? And he would drop his number and all that. Because let me tell you, the Middle East see the hell going on over there. And they know that our people will be the saving grace of the most. I will have the spirit on our people at the end to help what's going on. They know it. Our people are, 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 are so great. They're way greater than they would ever know. Because of the spirit in you and what the Most High will use you for in the future. The powers that be know this. When everything breaks down, we are next. Let's go back to Revelations 11. Revelations chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half. That three days and a half was the same period that 42 months, that 1,203 score years. This is the time period from the time the Romans destroyed us until the time that they would set up their order in which they would control everything. After that three and a half days, what happens? The spirit of life from the Most High Ahia Entered into them. Now the Most High's people are reviving and they're finding out all over the earth who they are. We're in that period right now. We've been in that period since early the early 2000s. Read. And they stood up, up and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now all the nations with all following all these religions. They're going to be totally amazed. And that's what fear is falling on them now. Because when we fell, they was able to set up stock markets and trade and do all these things. But now they see us waking up and we see them for who they are. And the fact that they knew it the whole time. And they now they're getting a little afraid now. They're coming together and saying, what are we going to do about them? And then the governments are saying, well, don't worry about it. We're going to do some false flags, set up some camps. And we're going to kill a lot of them. And we're going to put a lot of them in some of these camps. We're going to sterilize them so that they can't bring forth more children. It's all out war. This is what the war is about. It's the Gentile gods, the, the Gentiles who are set up under their gods against the children of this Bible. And we know they're going to try to censor this. But we're going to bring it forth all the way, real time. They just voted in the president of Egypt. What's that really about? I'm about to bring it right now. Bring the whole thing. What does that got to do with our people? I'm about to bring it through the spirit of the Most High right now. Read it. Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. This is linking up the Thessalonians 
the fourth chapter and also 1 Corinthians 15 when it tell you that we shall meet Christ in the air on his way back to judging this earth. Those that remain shall meet him in the air. This is not talking about the church being raptured. This is talking about the elect that's measured by the angels whom the government is looking to try to destroy. They will be taken from this earth getting their form changed and become a part of Christ's army on his way back to judge the governments of this earth. And all the enemies in their armies, the enemies who have been against us for years, will see this with their own eyes. Every eye shall see. So it's deeper than just what's coming from the sky and what's coming out of ports to save us. It's what we will become when Christ is on its way that they fear. Read on. Verse 13. Excuse me, verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they, dis they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And their enemies beheld them. Go ahead. Verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the power of heaven. And the remnant that are left are going to give glory to the God of the Hebrews when everything is said and done. They will see us change. Now there's more. The burden of Egypt. Let's go to Isaiah 19. You notice they have set up a new president under the Western world. Now mind you, they claim that there would be a, or that there was an organic uh, 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 revolution over in the Middle East in which the, the, uh, the Middle Easterns are fighting for democracy and to be free from dictatorship. Isn't that what they said? Why is it that all the dictators that the Western world are setting up from Saudi Arabia, which are from the seas of Ishmael, mind you, why is it that no sooner as they're set up, they are putting in Sharia law? I thought that, that the Western world was backing the rebels, the quote-unquote rebels, to set up a democracy, a freedom where you can have American lifestyles in these countries opposed to oppressive Islamic lifestyles. Remember they use their, their, uh, their television shows to tell us that they're going into the Middle East because women are oppressed and to free the woman from the oppression of Sharia law, how women are forced to wear certain things they can't. But you know Sharia law, a woman have, don't have no rights under Sharia law. Zero rights. But yet the Western world just took out a president, Mubarak, who allowed freedom for the women in Egypt, and they set up Sharia law. Why? You notice the guy they set up made a speech and says eventually that they will have their temple no longer or their, or their capital will no longer be Cairo, but Jerusalem. You heard him say that? Right? Y'all see that? This is what y'all don't know, brothers and sisters, and y'all need to find out. That the powers or the Khazars that are set up over in Israel today, all right, they are they, a large number, the more than half of their empire are Islam. Under the Turks, yes, that's them. They're the Khazars. And they're Muslim. They're playing on every side of the fence. They're really Khazars. They're setting up Khazars over these empires. Khazars and Ishmaelites. And making you think that these are Egyptians or Libyans. 